Hello, I'm John Adams, editor of Digital Photo, and welcome to this video lesson where we're going to look at hand colouring an old black and white photo. This is a great technique that allows you to modernise an ancient family photograph and it's sure to thrill any of your family members. Hand colouring requires layers because all the colouring work occurs separately to the image itself. As you create it, you can switch the colouring layer off and on to check your progress and see how the shot is transformed. We've got a picture here taken in the 1950s, but once you've practiced the techniques, dig out your own old photos from that shoebox in the attic and use your hand colouring skills to give them a fresh new look. Now, depending on how you've scanned or shot your old photo in the first place, the first thing you need to check is the mode of the image. If you pop up to Image and choose Mode, then you can go across and see what kind of colour mode the image is in. What you don't want it to be in is grayscale, so make sure that RGB colour is selected. So if you have scanned a grayscale image, change it to RGB colour at this stage and you'll be fine. You can't add any colour to a grayscale image, so you need that particular RGB colour mode. Right, once that's done, you need to get rid of any colour on the image to start with. We've got kind of a sort of a yellowy sepia tone on this particular picture, so we want to get rid of that. And the quickest way to do it is just to hold down Control and Shift and then hit U on the keyboard. And you'll then go to pure black and white. That means you've got a proper mono image as your starting point. Now, what I'm going to do is just to take this out the dock so we can move it over to one side, there we go. Then we've got our Layers Palette over here. If your Layers Palette isn't on screen, just go to Window and choose Layers. Make sure Layers is ticked and they will appear just alongside your image. What we need for our colouring layer is a brand new layer. And the way to do that is simply to click on this icon here. You'll find it at the top of the uh, palette in Elements and at the bottom in Photoshop. Click on that once and you'll get a new blank layer called Layer 1. Now this layer, we want to change its blending mode. It's blank at the moment, that's that checkerboard transparency that's lying within it at present. But we want to change the blending mode. So to do that, click where it says Normal, and then choose Colour. It's right down at the bottom of the list. Hopefully you can see that on screen. Right down at the bottom, you've got Colour. Select Colour as the blending mode, and then in the Opacity box, change that to about 50%. So we just move the slider down till we've got about 50% in Opacity. You're all now set up for the fun part, which is where you start colouring in. Now to do some colouring, you need some colours. And the easiest way to get colours is using the swatches palette. So if you go to Window and choose Swatches, or in Elements it's Window Colour Swatches, click on that and you'll get your colour swatches up on screen. I'll just uh, drag them out of the dock there. There we go, we can move that out of the way. OK, there's our swatches palette. We've got lots of different colours within there we can choose from. Now to paint, we need a brush, so if we select the Brush tool, and in the Options bar at the top of the screen in Photoshop, or down at the bottom of the screen, the Tool Options bar in Elements, make sure your brush opacity is set to 100%. Once you've done that, you can control your brush size by using the square brackets keys. Left will make your brush smaller, right will make your brush bigger. And the best kind of brush to have is a soft edge brush for this technique. So you can just go to your brush preset picker and make sure you've got a soft round brush selected. OK, we now need to select a colour, and if you move your brush cursor over the swatches palette, the cursor will change to an eyedropper icon. And you can then pick any of these swatches, any of these colours, and load that into the foreground colour swatch over here. So, what should we go for? I think we'll go for this one here. It's called Pastel Yellow Orange. And if we click on that, that will be imported into the foreground colour swatch. This is what we're going to use for our skin tone, so we'll make our brush a bit smaller. And then all we have to do is start painting over the skin in the image. So let's just do it. There we go. And we're just painting straight in over our subject's face there. And we can take in all of the skin. Now, we need a small brush to get into the detailed areas. But I'm just going to do this quite quickly. You can take a bit more time than me. There we go. Just going there. Now, you can see I've spilt over the edge in a couple of places. Don't worry too much about that for now, because what we can do is tidy up with the eraser tool. If you do go over the edge, as I have here, then all you need to do is select the eraser, set that to a small brush as well. So we'll take that down in brush size, just using the left square brackets key, and we can just tidy up any edges where we've gone wrong. OK, we'll go back to the brush tool, or the shortcut is B if you want to work quickly, and then we can paint in the rest of our flesh tones in the image. 
Now, do zoom in tight and take a bit more time than I am. I'm doing this quickly for the uh, for the purposes of a of a demonstration, but I would take a bit more time and go in much tighter under normal circumstances. So there we go. That's just uh, our lady's arms and hands painted. That's the kind of thing. We're going a bit smaller now with a brush, just to go into the fingers. There we go. And now we have the young lad to paint. So would you get a bigger brush to start with? And I'm going straight over the eyes and the teeth. We'll tidy those up later, but it tends to be quicker just to paint straight over the top of things and then clean up afterwards rather than trying to paint round small details like teeth and eyes and things. It's quicker just to swathe the brush over the top of everything and then uh, go in afterwards to tidy up. Let's do his ears and his hands. And as would be traditional in the 50s, all young lads wore a pair of shorts, so we'll paint his legs as well. There we go. And with that done, we have our skin tones all present and correct. So that's our first pass. We've done the flesh tones. What we now need to do is put some different tones into the lips and the eyes and the hair and all the other areas. But we'll deal with the lips first. Lip colour can be quite tricky because you may think, well, I'll just go for a bold red and paint that on. That's going to be too bold. So instead of that, what we're going to do is stick with our original colour, which was our pastel yellow orange. And what we're going to do is just click on the foreground colour swatch and that will load up the colour picker. All we're going to do now to get a bit more red into that colour is just move this slider down towards red. That's probably enough there, just a little bit more red and you can see the existing colour and the new colour we've got. And that's the colour we're going to use for the lips. So we'll click OK to that. And then we need to zoom in nice and tight so we can make a nice, clean, accurate paint job. So we select our brush tool again. We need a really small brush this time, probably about sort of 9 or 10 pixels. We can now paint into the lips and just get a nice finish around there. Now this time we're going to be a bit more accurate. We are going to tidy up teeth and eyes in a little while, but we're just going to paint the lips in first of all. There we go. A little bit rough around the edges. You take more time than me. I'm doing this very quickly. But that's the lips done there. Then we can hold down the space bar, scroll across to the young lad. And we can do the same thing and just paint in the lips like so. It's great fun doing this because it's a, it's a very manual operation. You're actually painting onto the image, which is exactly what you'd have done in the good old days before colour film was invented. You'd have used some small artist brushes to actually paint onto the picture. There we go, that's the lips done. And now we need another colour to paint in the irises of the eyes. So I think uh, this young lad has got blue eyes, at least I'm guessing that's the case. So what we're going to do is pick a nice blue colour. So let's pick a pale blue. We'll try this one here in the swatches palette. and We'll just paint that in and see how it looks. That looks a little bit bold to me, a bit too loud. So I'm going to hit Control and Z to undo that. And then I'll pick a paler colour, something like that. I'll try that instead. That's a little bit better. A bit more subtlety in that particular colour. And we'll just paint in those irises. And then our lady over on the left, she's got brown eyes. And they look quite natural as they are. So I'm going to leave those eyes there. But of course, if you want to change eye colour, you can just pick another colour and put that in. Once we've done that, we need to clean up the teeth and the whites of the eyes. And to do that, we're simply going to remove the paint that we've already put on. So we select the eraser tool. And we need a nice small brush again, something like sort of 9 or 10 pixels. And we can simply paint into the whites of the eyes and remove that sort of a kind of browny sepia flesh tone that we've already applied. So you need to go in nice and tight and just do some work there. Same for the teeth. We're just going to sweep that across the teeth so they're restored to a neutral black and white. They look a little bit blue here, but that's only because you've got this flesh tone that you're seeing it on. But they won't look blue once we've finished. And we go across and we'll do the young lad as well. So we'll paint out his eyes. Just that little bit there. There we go. And the other one. And that will also remove that little overspill of, uh, of blue that came off the iris. Then we can do his teeth too. Sweep across. And we have a nice job done so far. OK, if you double click the hand tool, we'll come back to full screen mode. You can see our picture's really starting to take shape. But what we need now is some hair colour. So let's choose that next. Let's get our brush once more. And we need to pick some hair colour from our swatches palette. 
Now, what should we go for? Well, I'm going to try this colour here. Pure yellow orange. That might be a bit too bold, but let's see what happens. Increase brush size a little bit and we'll just paint that in. That's maybe a bit loud, but I think I'll go with it for the time being. Just adjusting brush size as I paint. Quite small there. And there we can just go around the hair. There we go. Yeah, it's slightly, uh, slightly bright and aggressive that one, but uh, I'm sure you'll be able to pick a slightly more subtle colour when you give it a go. For the young lad, I need kind of a, a pale yellow for blonde hair, so I'll pick this one here and we'll try that. Let's, how does that look? Yeah, that looks okay. So we'll paint on some blonde hair. That's the sort of thing. Just moving round, then smaller brush. Just go down the sides and along. And that looks pretty good. After that comes the clothing. But one thing you may want to do as well are the fingernails. And a good way to do fingernails is to use the lip colour. That can often work really effectively. So first of all we're going to zoom in. So let's go in tight on the fingernails. There we go, that should do the trick. Then we need a nice small brush size. So let's just go a bit smaller than that. And then what we need to do is sample the lip colour. That would be ideal for the fingernails. Now the lip colour isn't in the swatches palette because we created that ourselves. And now we've lost it because it's no longer in the foreground colour swatch. Or have we? The thing is the lip colour still exists on the lips of course. So if you switch off the background layer and then scroll back up to where the lips are, there they are, we can sample that colour directly from the image. All you have to do when you've got the brush tool selected is hold down the ALT key on the keyboard and you'll get the eyedropper. Then click exactly on where the lips are and you've got that colour sampled. There it is there in the foreground colour swatch. And all we have to do now is switch our background layer back on. We can scroll back down to the fingernails and paint them in. There we go. Now we can use that colour and just you've got that slightly richer tone that we used on the lips just to paint in the fingernails. Because it's this kind of attention to detail that works really well on hand colouring projects. So we're just painting those nails. A few more here. You can see I've left a few edges here where I've rushed through the process, but uh, you won't be doing that because you'll be taking a bit more time than me. There we go, that's that fingernail. One more here. And we can do the young lads as well. If we scroll across, where's his nails? There they are. And we just paint those in. Okay, nice and quick to do. And you can see there's a bit of hand I've left out. So I'm going to use that same sampling technique. Switch off the background layer. This is the colour we use for the hands. Hold down Alt, click, switch it back on again. And now we can just paint in that same colour over any sort of skin areas that we've missed out. Really quick and easy to do. And it means that your swatches palette, your actual colours you're using, are being created as you go. And then you can always use the image itself to sample them if you need to uh, do a bit of touching up or some restoration work on the image. Right, we'll double click the hand tool. And now it's time for some clothing. Well, we need to pick a colour for the dress. I'm not sure what colour the dress was in the original shot, but uh, I think a, a vibrant green would look pretty good on this image. So let's try a green. Get the brush tool and then we'll uh, let's try this one here. We'll click on this green colour, increase our brush size a bit and we'll just try a swathe of it over the dress. Well that's rather nice. That's working well. So we can paint in the dress, smaller brush size there. And uh, this is where when you do it you'll need to zoom in tight and work really hard on getting nice joins between each of the adjoining colours. You don't really want paint overspilling as I have but that's only because I'm doing it quickly so we'll quickly paint around there and get a nice colour to that rather glamorous dress bit of colouring in that's it and then we can go down and just tidy up this edge here and all that's left really is maybe the tie I think he'd be wearing a white shirt so we'll leave that white I think his shorts would be grey so we can leave those okay but I think uh, a blue tie would look pretty good in this image so uh, we'll zoom in on that area and then we'll select a nice blue for the tie let's see something like this that sort of pale blue there get our brush tool slightly smaller brush we can just paint over the tie giving it that nice blue hue there we go now if you want to go a bit further 
This kind of looks a bit like a, a prefix tie, the sort of tie that have some yellow stripes on. So what we might do is just pick a yellow and highlight these brighter areas as well. So let's, uh, let's get a yellow colour, something like that. Small brush size. We can now just paint over these areas with that nice yellow and just give a, a nice little accent colour to that tie. This one as well. Just using the uh, spacebar all the time and dragging the mouse just to scroll around the image at this uh, highly detailed rate. There we go. A bit of yellow in there, and perhaps this bit too. Just get a bit of yellow across the top. There we go, let's see how that looks. Double click the hand tool. That's coming along nicely. And all that's really left now is the background. But we've got to be quite careful with backgrounds because any very pale areas can easily become oversaturated using a color blending mode. Let me show you what I mean. If we pick something like a blue and think, yeah, a blue background would be good, we then choose our brush, and if we start to paint with that blue, it's going to look pretty gaudy. That's too bright. So what you need to do with very pale colours, or very subtle colours, is make sure that the saturation content of the colour you pick is very, very low. And the easiest way to do that, let's pick that blue, pick that base colour, and then click on the foreground colour swatch to bring up your colour picker. We've got fully saturated blue here at the moment, so what we need to do is just slide it across towards white or towards black to just take some of the saturation out of that colour. And if we get a very pale colour, something like that, so we've only got a hint of blue in there, and then click OK, we can then paint over that background and get a much subtler blue sheen to the background. Now you can see it's just coming through. I need a smaller brush there. So it's giving us a hint of colour without overpowering the whole scene and looking very artificial. So there's a bit of background colour gone in there. I'll just paint round. And that's pretty much the entire process. There we go. Let's just get that little bit there. Now one of the things, when you're actually painting, it's easy to miss areas out. Really easy to leave holes. And sometimes you don't see these until you print out the image. And then you've got to go back to the drawing board and start again and retouch the work you were supposed to be retouching. So a good way to check whether or not you've done that and missed out some areas is to actually look at the colour layer on its own. And the way to do that is simply switch off the background. So if we switch off the background layer, we can see here's our colour work. Now it's at 50% opacity at the moment, so what we're going to do is increase it, take it to 100%, then we can really see what we've done. You can see all these gaps I've left, areas where it's gone wrong. It wasn't really noticeable on the image itself, but it is noticeable when you look at just that colour layer. So what we're going to do now is clean up. And again, we're using our brush tool. We can simply Alt and click to sample a particular colour. Then we can clean up any areas where we've made some errors. So around here is a bit of a problem. Got a few gaps in the drapes in the background. A little bit here as well. That's the sort of thing. And on the dress too. So to sample a different colour, you simply hold down the Alt key and click on it. And it's done. Really quick and easy to do. So now we can fill in some of those holes we've left in the dress to make sure that we haven't got any telltale signs of gaps when we make our final print. So we'll just click around there. And you can make that as clean as you like by zooming in tight and working with the image as well. You can just make sure you've got all those lines covered. But that's the basic principle behind hand colouring an old black and white image. And once it's done, don't leave it looking all gaudy like that. What you need to do is then reduce your opacity, as you did before, down to around 50%, or perhaps a little bit less even, just to give that nice muted colour effect. So I'm going to go for about 44%. And there we have a lovely hand colouring job. And present that reworked image to a family member who knows them or remembers them, and they'll be absolutely over the moon. It's a great technique to try, because it's so easy once you get started, it's something you can involve the whole family in. Alright, dig out those old photos from a shoebox in the loft and give that a go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.